हेलो माय डियर लिसनर्स थैंक यू फॉर वेटिंग सो लॉन्ग एंड थैंक यू फॉर सब्सक्राइबिंग माय चैनल थैंक यू फॉर हेल्पिंग मी आउट थैंक यू फॉर द सपोर्ट नाउ इट इज़ टाइम टू रीड आउट द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द स्टोरी व्हाट वाज द नेम द स्टोरी ऑफ श्वेत बसंत सो लेट स्टार्ट टिल नाउ फर्स्ट रिकेपचुलेट इन अ ब्रीफ टिल नाउ वट वी हैव सीन वी हैव सीन श्वेत एंड बसंत uh eventually shwet got married but uh their father father remarried after the death of their mother or the almira uh, lady after that uh, after that uh, like nor- normal mother in law and the um, wife they couldn't <laughs> get uh, they couldn't get along in a very good note so what happened next let's let's uh, dig into it it so happened one day that a fisherman brought to the merchant we shall no longer call him the merchant son son as his father had died a fish of the singular beauty okay so let's re re read this sentence it so happened one day that a fisherman brought to the merchant a fish of the singular beauty it was unlike any other fish that had been seen the fish had marvelous qualities ascribed to it by the fisherman if any one if any one eats it said he when he loves manix manix are the precious rubies will drop from his mouth and when he weeps pearls will drop from his eyes the merchant hearing of the wonderful properties of the fish brought bought it at 1000 rupees and put it into the hands of swet's wife who was the mistress of the house strictly enjoying on her enjoying on her to cook it well and to give it to him alone to eat the mistress or house mother who had overheard the conversation between her father in law and the fisherman secretly resolved in her mind to give the cooked fish to her husband and to his brother to eat and to give to her father in law instead of frog daintily cooked when she had finished cooking both the fish and the frog oh she heard the noise of a squabble between her stepmother in law and her husband's brother it appears that basanta who was but a lad yet was passionately fo- uh, fond of pigeons which he tamed one of these pigeons had flown into the room of his stepmother who had secreted secreted it in her clothes basanta rushed into the room and loudly demanded the pigeon his stepmother denied by knowledge denied any knowledge of the pigeon on which the elder brother shwet forcibly took out the bird from her clothes and gave it to his brother the stepmother cursed and swore and added wait when the head of the house comes home i will make him shed the blood shed the blood of you both before i give him water to drink shwet's wife called her husband and said to him my dearest lord that woman woman is a most wicked woman and has boundless influence over my father in law she will make him do what she has threatened our life is in imminent imminent danger our life is in imminent danger let us first eat a little and let us all three run away from this place swet forthwith called basanta to him and told him what he had heard from his wife they resolved to run away before nightfall 
द वुमन प्लेस्ड बिफोर हर हजबेंड एंड हिज ब्रदर इन लॉ द फिश ऑफ वंडरफुल प्रॉपर्टीज एंड दे एट ऑफ इट हार्टिली द वुमन पैक्ड अप ऑल हर ज्वेल्स इन अ बॉक्स एज देर वॉज ओनली वन हॉर्स एंड इट वॉज ऑफ अनकॉमन फ्लीटनेस द थ्री सेट अपॉन इट स्विथ हेल्ड द रेन्स The woman sat in the middle with the jewel box in her lap and Basanta brought up the rear. The horse galloped with the utmost swiftness. They passed through many a plain and many a noted town. Till after midnight they found themselves in a forest not far from the bank of a river. Here the most un- untoward event took place. Swift's wife began to feel the pains of childbirth they dismounted and in an hour or two Swift's wife gave birth to a son whatever the two brothers to do in this forest a fire must be kindled to give heat both to the mother and the newborn baby but where was the fire to be got there were no human habit stations visible still fire must be produced and it was the month um, still fire must be produced uh, st- uh, fire must be procured and it was the month of december or else both the mother and the baby mother and the baby uh, baby would certainly perish swet told vasanta to sit beside his wife while he set out in the darkness of the night in search of fire swet walked many a mile in darkness still he saw no human habitations at last the genial at last the genial light of shukra somewhat illuminated his path and he saw at a distance what seemed a large city he was congratulating himself on his journey's end and on his being able able to obtain fire from the benefit of his poor wife lying cold in the forest with the newborn babe when on a sudden an elephant gorgeously caper uh, caparisoned shot across his path and gently taking him up by his trunk placed him on the ridge how the on its back how the is the kind of uh, saddle uh, not saddle but is a kind of saddle which is uh, placed on the back of the elephant so that one can one can comfortably sit on it uh, it when walked rapidly towards the city swet was quite taken aback he did not understand the meaning of the elephant's action and wondered what was in store for him a crown was in store for him in that kingdom the chief city of which he was approaching every morning a king was elected for the king of the previous day was always found dead dead in the morning in the room of the queen what caused the death of the king no one knew neither did the queen herself for every successive king for every successive king took her to wife no the cause okay um what was the death of the king no one knew neither did the queen herself queen herself knew, know the cause and the elephant who took hold of swet was the king maker early in the morning early in the morning it went about sometimes to distant places and whosoever was brought on its back was acknowledged king by the people, by the people the elephant majestically marched through the crowded through the crowded streets of the city amid the acclamations of the people the meaning of which swet did not understand entered the palace and placed him on the throne he was proclaimed king amid the rejoicing 
rejoicings of some and the lamentations of others in the course of the day he heard of the strange fatality which overtook every night the elected king of those realms but being possessed of great discretion and courage he took every precaution to avert the dreadful catastrophe yet he hardly knew what exp- expedients to adopt as he was unacquainted with the nature of the danger he resolved however upon two things and this were to go armed into the queen's bed chamber and to set up awake the whole night the queen queen was young and of exquisite uh, sorry the ki- the queen was young and of exquisite uh, and of exquisite beauty and so galileus and and benevolent was the expression of her face that it was impossible from looking at her to suppose that she would use any foul mean of making away the life of her uh, means of taking away the life of her nightly consort in the queen's chamber swet spent a very agreeable evening as the night advanced the queen fell asleep but swet kept awake and was on the alert looking at every creak and the corner of the room and expecting every minute to be murdered in the dead of the, of night he perceived something like a thread coming out of the left nostril of the queen the thread was so thin that it was almost invisible as he watched it uh, watched it he found it several years long and yet it was coming out when the whole of it had come out it began to grow thick and in a new and in a few minutes it assumed the form of a huge serpent in a moment swet cut off the head of the serpent the body of which wriggled violently he sat quiet in the room expecting other adventures but nothing else happened the queen slept longer than usual and she had been relieved of the huge snake which made her which had made her stomach its den early next morning the ministers came expecting as usual to hear of the king's death but when the ladies of the bed chamber knocked at the door of the queen they were astonished to see see swet come out it was then known to all the people how that every night a terrible snake issued from the queen's nostrils how it devoured the king every night and how it had at last been killed by the fortunate swet the whole country rejoiced in the prospect of a permanent king it is a strange thing never nevertheless it is true that swet did not remember his poor wife with a newborn babe lying in the forest not his brother attending on her with the possession of the throne he seemed to forget the whole of his past history basanta to whom his brother had entrusted his wife and child sat watching for many a weary hours expecting every moment to see swet return with fire the whole night passed away without his return at sunrise he went to the blank went to the bank of the river which was close by and anxiously looked about for his brother but in vain in vain distressed beyond measure he sat on the river side and wept a boat was passing by in which a merchant was returning to his country as the boat was not far from the shore the merchant saw vasanta weeping and what struck the attention of the merchant was the heap of what looked like pearls near the weeping man at the request of the merchant the boatman took his vessel towards the bank the merchant went to the weeping man and found that the heap was a heap of real pearls of the finest luster 
and what astonished him most of all, uh, most of all was that the heap was increasing every second for the tear drops that were falling from his eyes fell to the ground not as tears but as pearls the merchant stowed away the heap of pearls into his boat and with the help of his servants caught hold of basanta himself put him on board the on board the vessel and tied him to a post basanta of course resist, uh, resisted but what could he do against so many thinking of his brother his brother's wife and baby and his own cap captivity basanta wept more bitterly than before while mightily which mightily pleased the merchant as the more tears his captive shed the richer he himself became when the merchant reached his native town he confined basanta in a room and at stated hours every day scourged him in order to make him shed tears every one of which was converted into a bright pearl the merchant one day said to his servants as the fellow is making me rich by his weeping let us see what he gives me by laughing accordingly he began to tickle his captive on which basanta laughed and as he laughed a great many maniks dropped from his mouth after this poor basanta was alternately whipped and tickled all the day and far into the night and the merchant merchant in consequence became the wealthiest man in the land living basanta subjected to the alternate pros processes of castigation uh, process of processes of casting uh, castigation and and titillation let us attain to the fortunes of the poor wife of shwet alone in the forest with a child just born so my dear friends i am today resting this story uh, up to this uh, point afterwards we will explore what happened to shwet's wife and his newborn child so then tada